If your house is feeling messy and you are completely overwhelmed, I want you to know that you're not alone and I'm gonna show you exactly how you can get it tidy right now. We recently moved to a new house and it's been amazing, but also really stressful for me. I get overwhelmed with big messes, especially when I don't have a place to put things. I know I do this for a living. This should be easy for me, but messes are overwhelming and I procrastinate. The bigger they are, the more I put them off. The basement was like an exact example of this. Everything I didn't know where it should go, we were just shoving things in the basement, making it the room of doom. This was supposed to be an office, a place where I'm supposed to work. This is the reason we bought the house. And instead it was a dumping ground that I was avoiding at all costs. But here's the thing. I know that getting a big mess like this tidy is a four step process. And I'm going to share that process right now. And you can use this for any room in your house. Are you ready? No matter how big the mess, let's do this. The first step is the most important because it stops the decision fatigue. It stops your brain from going a mile a minute and it stops you from getting distracted. And that is picking three things that you're going to do in the space and only three things that might be picking up the trash, doing the dishes, or just tidying a small space. For me, I need to zone this basement, which means gathering all the like items together and putting them where I would think to look for them first. Or if it has a home, putting it there immediately. I'm just focusing on zoning. The second thing is setting up some furniture so things actually have a place to go, and then a light vacuum. Three things makes this space feel way less overwhelming. The second thing you need to do is set a timer for 60 minutes. When you have a big mess, five minutes is amazeballs. Okay, listen, but five minutes is not going to get you ahead. Five minutes is not going to make a big difference. You need the power of an hour. One hour can move literal mountains. It isn't a crazy overwhelming amount of time. So set a timer for 60 minutes, grab your list of three things and just jump in. Step three is distract your brain. Big messes are so stressful and our brain wants to avoid stressful situations. So you're going to start to overthink. You're going to start to want to leave the space, to leave the overwhelming feelings. So if you can distract your brain with things like music or audiobooks, put on a podcast or a YouTube video in the background, that's going to help calm your brain, especially if you have ADHD or any type of executive function disorder. This background noise shuts the brain off, shuts off your lizard brain and helps you stay in the moment, helps you stay present and focusing on those three things you know you need to get done. An hour can seem like a ton of time, but if you can pair this, if you can complement this hour with listening to a book, you're really doubling up. You're being extra productive, but more importantly, you're making sure that you're not going to get frustrated or unfocused and leave the space. The fourth step is also super critical, and that is identifying your block in this space. Everybody has a block. Look at your room. What is the thing that you want to avoid the most? What is it about this space that makes you want to procrastinate it? For me, Anytime I have things that don't have a home, don't have an actual place to go, I feel very overwhelmed. Your block might be dishes or laundry or you thinking that the job is going to take a lot longer than it is and you don't want to have to work an entire day on a space. Identifying your block that's causing you to procrastinate or not feel motivated, it's important. We don't have to solve this block. We just have to be aware of it. And for me, not having a spot to put this stuff, I don't have to make it perfect right now. And I can remind myself of that. This is about one hour better. This isn't about perfection. This is about what can I do in 60 minutes to make myself proud? How can I push the needle forward? I don't need to have everything done. Identifying that block for you in your home and telling yourself, that you can do this and, I, and really owning that is critical to stop you from procrastinating big messes.
So I'm tired. It's been just about an hour and it's nowhere close to done, but it's so much better. We can actually walk in here. We can work in here. It needs a good scrub. It needs a few more minutes of just putting things into place, but seriously, you can move mountains in one hour, especially if you have people to help you set a timer and see what you can do. Before I talk about one of the greatest things that you can do to stay motivated on a daily basis to tackle your home, I have to thank today's sponsor, Marlo. I'm all about luxury in the bedroom. I want to feel like I'm crawling into like a hotel worthy bed. So I've treated myself to brand new pillows and there's no going back. When is the last time you got yourself a really good quality pillow and I definitely recommend Marlo. The Marlo pillow is just designed to give you a good night's sleep. I like that it's adjustable so I can zip it all the way up for a firmer pillow and if I want a more plush pillow I can unzip one or both of the sides. It also has chill cooling infused foam so I'm getting a good night's sleep on a cool pillow without having to flip it a million times. A good quality pillow means you wake up without a sore neck. It means you wake up refreshed and you are worth it so treat yourself today. Click the link below to get yourself a Marlow pillow and change the way you sleep. And right now you can purchase two Marlow pillows for 20% off and four pillows for 30% off. When you use my link below, you'll also get an additional 10% off. If you're looking for more daily motivation, if you wanna wake up energized every day and feel like raring to tackle your home, here's the greatest hack. The best thing you can do is focus on your bedroom. For some reason, we neglect our bedrooms. We shove everything in here because company doesn't see it. It feels like the bottom of the importance in our home, but it should be the top because it's the first thing you see when you wake up and it's the last thing you see when you go to bed. Make it a priority. And it's not about paint or decorating. I don't love this room at all. I can't wait to give it a makeover, but we can make it the best that we can today with a little love. Put away the laundry, get rid of the things that don't belong, make your bed, and then how can you shop your home for little things to make it feel put together? We have added a mirror and I had old dollar store picture frames I was gonna donate that I printed off wedding photos and some like lovey-dovey photos of Joe and I. These things cost nothing, but they're that act of hugging and loving your bedroom that make you feel proud of your space. I've always wanted to have a makeup table, so just pulling an old desk from the basement up, I treated myself to a little makeup light and used Milo's old office chair, and now I have this little special place in my bedroom just for me, for putting on makeup and getting ready, and it's these small acts of kindness to yourself in the bedroom that are gonna mean that when you wake up in the morning and you open your eyes and your space feels loved and tidy, you are gonna feel motivated to tackle the rest of the day. This is the best motivating hack I ever tried. The rest of my home can look like a dump, but when you focus on your bedroom, it has power. Our garage was a huge honking crazy pants mess. When I first moved into this house, I was like, can I actually park in a garage and not have to chisel ice off the van every winter? Like that felt amazing. But now when I walk into this space, it feels like an impossibility. Everything is a huge mess. And I know this is going to take forever. So I've been shutting the door and avoiding. And every time I avoid it, it makes the mess worse the next day. So I know I need to start by identifying the top three things to do in this space. And I definitely, the number one thing is take out anything that doesn't belong. I have an attic right above where I'm going to move all the totes of like Christmas decor or seasonal decor. And I can do that in just a few minutes. I also want to zone areas of this garage. So moving cabinetry, just putting all the sporting equipment together, putting all the, you know, gardening tools together. It's not perfect. I don't have organizing systems, but that's not what this is about. It's just zoning. And last but not least, making sure I have enough space for a van to park. We set a timer for 60 minutes and just jumped in. I immediately wanted to jump back out. I'm not going to lie and say like, da 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 da, this was fun. I 
did not enjoy this. I, I kept telling myself there's no way I'm gonna make a difference in one hour. There's no way, it's a waste of my time. I need a whole weekend, but I'm sticking with it. And I've got help, which is so important. If you can invite over a friend or a family member to help body double while doing this, you're gonna notice a big difference that you're gonna feel obligated to stay in this space. When that timer went off at the end of one hour, I was floored at how much better this space looked. 60 minutes made a huge impact, not only in how the space looked, but in my self-confidence, in my self-esteem. I felt so freaking proud of myself. And guess what, you guys? I can park in this garage. I hope you're feeling motivated to really feel that power of an hour. Pick three things that you're gonna do in a space that's overwhelming you, set a timer for one hour, distract your brain with something cool, and jump in. 60 minutes to a happier you, 60 minutes to more self-esteem, to a tidier space, 60 minutes to make you proud of yourself. You are going to be amazed what you can accomplish and it will not be perfect and it will not be done, but it will be better. That's what this is all about. This is about standing up for ourselves and what we deserve and fighting for the home that you are craving. I hope you're feeling motivated. Let us know in the comments below what space you're going to tackle today. And if you know what your biggest block is, identifying that block can help you overcome it so you continue to feel the motivation on a daily basis. Thank you so much and I'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, thanks so much for those of you who have stayed to the end. I have a lot of anxiety and I'm a bit of a hypochondriac. I always think like I'm dying at any moment, you know? I get a tickle in my throat, it's the end. And so I go to my doctors a lot, a lot. And I go to the dentist for popcorn kernels that I'm pretty sure is like an abscess and they, like an abscess and they have to remove all my teeth and it always turns out to be nothing. So this behavior has made me maybe almost insecure to kind of stand up for myself at the doctor sometimes because it's 99.9% .9 of the time absolutely nothing. But this past two weekends ago, my throat was really hurting and I could feel like that acid burn and I knew it was strep. I went to the doctors and she assured me that it was probably just allergies. What a baby I am. I couldn't sleep at night. The pain was so bad. So I requested like a a strep swab, she kind of was like, it, I think you're fine. And I was sent home with gargling mouthwash, okay? A few days later, it was getting worse and I could feel it kind of going down to my lungs and a part of me is like, don't bother them, you know? Don't go back, don't be a whiner. She said you're fine, but we also need to stand up for ourselves, you know? I went back and I demanded a rapid strep test and it came back positive. Now by this point, I completely lost my voice and a few days later, it was full-blown pneumonia. I was rough, friends, I was rough, but also validated, vindicated. I was sick, I'm not a giant baby. Trust your body, know yourself and fight for what you think is really wrong with you. Don't be afraid to ask for more tests, demand more tests. Do not let a doctor in their busy, hectic schedule kind of shame you into going home without answers. So I'm on a crap ton of antibiotics and steroids. My voice is coming back. I still feel craptacular, but I also feel like this is such a lesson for me that yes, I'm a hypochondriac. Yes, I'm a big baby, but also sometimes I know myself and I have every right to fight for the care that I think I deserve. And so do you. So Make a doctor's appointment, friends. And also, if you're over 40, get a camera in the butt and, and a mammogram. I know it's gross, but we gotta do it, girls. Okay, that's weird. I'll see you guys next time.